Hi, I'm Prof Al and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today in the lab, we are going to learn how to use a separating funnel. And that is one of these guys here. Uh, you may be familiar with these. Some of you may have even used these before. Uh, but we'll talk you through, again, the do's and don'ts of how to use this deceptively simple piece of apparatus. So, what do we got here? What are we going to use this for? We are going to use it to separate two immiscible liquids. And when we say immiscible, that means that they don't mix. And essentially, what often happens with these sorts of things is that you end up extracting one compound from one layer to the other immiscible layer. And uh, the term separating funnel basically means that the layers don't mix and then you can easily separate uh, the two layers out. Right, number one, how do we use them carefully? Number two, uh, where do we use them? Usually in a fume hood, but they're a little bit difficult to film in, so for today, <clears throat> we'll just be working out in the lab. So, let's go ahead and show you how to do everything. Right, the most important thing when you are filling up a separating funnel is obviously to make sure that your tap is closed. That's always a good idea. So, your tap's closed. Here's the solution that we are going to be extracting. This is a solution of iodine in water. And so let's put that into our separating funnel like so. And then to extract that, we're going to use a solvent that is immiscible with water, that solvent now being chloroform. So <coughs> ordinarily it'd be a good idea to put this in a beaker. Uh, here's hoping we don't spill too much. And so we just put a smidge of chloroform in there. And you can see straight away that we've got two layers. And you can see straight away that interesting things have happened color-wise. Now, which layer is which? That's always an important thing to know when you're using a separating funnel. Obviously, you've got the more dense layer on the bottom. You've got the less dense layer on the top. In this case, the more dense layer is chloroform. The less dense layer is water. Now it turns out that iodine is a lot more soluble in chloroform than it is in water. So let's do the separation and see if we can pull out all or at least most of the iodine out of the aqueous layer, the top layer, into the organic layer, which is the bottom layer. So first thing to do, put in your stopper and then invert it gently, making sure you're not pointing it at your lab mate and let off any pressure that is there, okay? And then Agitate it gently, and again, let off any pressure that is there. Again, agitating gently, let off any pressure, and keep doing this for a good, gosh, I don't know, minute or so probably. Shake, shake, shake. The more volatile solvents that you use, things like diethyl ether, you will get a lot of pressure building up in here. And so make sure that you are always letting off the pressure like so. And again, as I said, always making sure that you're not pointing the separating funnel at your lab mates. So, we'll give it one last decent shake and let off any pressure. And okay, let's see what now happens. So, we can stick it back now in our clamp to let it separate out. And so we'll put it back in there. And now you can see that it looks like it's separating out quite nicely. This can take a while depending on uh, the solvents that you're using. Uh, sometimes if you shake things too hard, then you can end up with an emulsion and you really don't want to do that because either they take forever to separate out or they'll just never separate out at all. So you can see this is separating out quite nicely now. You can see certainly the chloroform layer there. Slowly separating out. And what we should eventually have, if we hold this up for the camera, is that you will get a clear delineation between um, the aqueous layer here and the chloroform layer there. And so you can see the aqueous layer is sort of um, yeah, going up a little bit, this guy's going up a little bit, and you'll eventually get to the point where 
you'll have a nice clear line between the two layers. And so we're waiting, waiting, waiting. And this is where we fast forward. <sighs> Come on. And I think now you can see that there's pretty much <clears throat> a good separation between the two layers here, okay? So there's your chloroform layer, pretty obviously now. There is your aqueous layer. And you can see there's a pretty clear line between them. So what we will now do is to run off the chloroform layer. This is the stuff that we want. And so therefore, we're gonna run that off into a beaker. And you'll notice, obviously, the aqueous layer has still got that iodine-ish color in there. So we may well extract this again and see if we can get more iodine out. So here we go. Pop that back in your ring stand. Now you're running off the bottom layer here. So. Just do this nice and slowly. No point in going too fast here. You don't want to overshoot. And so you can run off your chloroform layer here. <clears throat> and notice it goes down faster the closer you get to the bottom. So just slow it down. And then as soon as that layer hits the top of your tap, turn off the tap. So you'll see that going now, drip by drip by drip by drip by drip. And there we go there, okay? So that's done. <clears throat> that's the first extraction. And you can see now we have a beautiful uh, chloroform solution of um, iodine here, okay? And you'll notice it's a different color in chloroform than it is in water, which is quite interesting, sort of a brown color in water. So what we're going to do is do that all again, because we do have some more iodine left in the aqueous layer. So let's throw a little bit more chloroform in there and see if we can't get a little bit more of the iodine extracted. So again, you don't need too much. That should be tons. <clears throat> again, the chloroform is the dense layer. So taking that out, you can see that even just pouring the chloroform in, we've got some more iodine going into the chloroform layer there. So let's do the same again. So again, invert gently and let off any pressure. Bit of a shake. And inverting, letting off pressure. Shake, shake, shake. <clears throat> And this is a very, very common part of organic chemistry. When you're doing organic chemistry workups, when you've done a chemical reaction, an organic reaction, and you want to isolate the product, uh, doing this sort of process uh, is very, very common when it comes to purifying or at least isolating the product of an organic reaction. And you can see straight away, again, that uh, we have taken some more iodine out of the aqueous layer. Uh, the two layers are separating out very, very nicely now. You can see those beautiful bubbles there in the chloroform layer as that is separating, forming those nice two layers with the clear interface between them. So we just give that maybe 30 seconds or a minute or something for that interface just to become absolutely clear between the two. And that's looking pretty good. We'll just give it a wee bit more. <clears throat> but again, this is usual. Um, often when you're isolating a product, you will do an extraction twice, maybe even three times, uh, to get all of the product out of one layer into the other one. Okay. And so, of course, all of the water-soluble stuff, the, 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 the principle behind this whole um, separation is that all of the water soluble material will stay in the aqueous layer all of the chloroform soluble material will go into the chloroform layer so iodine as i said being more soluble in chloroform than it is in water it favors the chloroform layer here so again now we can run that off it's pretty much separated so stick it back in your ring stand and you can add it pretty much straight to the first extract and again, doing it nice and slowly, just dripping your stuff into there. 
and we've got a perfect um, separation here. We've got a lovely, lovely, clean, clear separation between the two layers, as you can see here. And it's going down, 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 down. And again, you just take it to the top of the tap and you're done like that, okay? You will, you, you'll lose a smidge in the tap, but really that's, that's not worth worrying about. And so we won't do it again. That will be the end of it. Um, and so what we end up with now is your aqueous layer, which contains the material that you essentially don't want. Now, <clears throat> let's assume that this is the stuff that you did want. Then after you do your extraction, you don't run this out through the tap. You simply take this and you just pour it out the top that's the usual way to do things if your material that you're after is in the top layer. Okay, so that's it on how to use a separating funnel. Fairly straightforward stuff. Um, what to remember, probably the big thing, let off the pressure. Make sure that you're always releasing the pressure. Don't be tempted to shake it too much before you release the pressure. Don't point it at your lab mates. Um, and be careful when you're running off the um, bottom layer make sure you don't run too fast because then obviously that kind of defeats the whole purpose of the separation. So um, hopefully you've learned a little bit today and uh, we'll see you in the next video when we learn how to use another piece of apparatus. See you then.